<coughs> okay. Um, <coughs> there are many ways to do the uh, dimension reduction. Um, what is dimension? If you have uh, a um, an Excel spreadsheet for a file that has many columns, each of the columns is a dimension. Okay. Uh, <coughs> and uh, in principle, component analysis, which is one of the many ways to do dimension reduction, uh, the idea is to have less variables, less columns, <coughs> if they satisfy uh, something that I'll talk about. So the dimensionality of the model, okay, the dimensionality of the model is the number of, indep of independent or input variables used by the model. <coughs> um, so, So, uh, you know, when, when, when we did, last time I showed you a multiple linear regression, right? We had uh, something like x1 plus something times, uh, I mean, plus something times x2, right? You can have many of these. These are the independent variables. So, if, you, if n is 20, then the dimensionality is 20, all right? <coughs> and um, okay. And so, what we want to do is to reduce the dimensionality without sacrificing accuracy. That needs to be explained. <coughs> um, and I talk about um, what's very important in principal component analysis. Principal component analysis is not a data mining algorithm. Principal component analysis, if you want to do data mining, okay, PCA is done before you do uh, data mining. PCA is part of pre-processing. You know, uh, you uh, take care of missing data, we did that last time, you take care of outliers, we talked about it. <coughs> um, PCA is another uh, task that you want to perform before you do uh, data mining. PCA is one of the many ways to reduce the dimension without sacrificing accuracy. So this will need to be explained. Will be I also mentioned here a weighted average. <coughs> um, anybody has any idea what a weighted average is? Yes. You assign <coughs> you assign weights to each of the values you're taking the Perfect. average one. Yes. <coughs> so, um, if you um, um, we are all evaluated. Okay, I'm evaluated. You are evaluate, I evaluate you, somebody evaluates me, somebody evaluates the thing, somebody evaluates the problem, we're all evaluated. So <clears throat> let's say that you're evaluated based on a number of uh, things, x1, x2, and x3, all right? So x1 for me could be, for example, um, how well do I uh, help you understand the concept? x2 is, um, am I always on time? X3 is, um, am I polite? So, and let's say that they put a weight here of 0 0.6 here, 0 0.2, and 0.2. So, they derive some value. This Y is a weighted average of X1, X2, X3, those three that I mentioned, right? This is very important uh, uh, when we, uh, when I get to uh, PCA. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> if there's something you don't understand, and some people do a very good job with that, if you read something and you don't understand it, 
the uh, just put a question mark next to it and then come to me with all the question marks. Right? <coughs> um, okay. So <coughs> um, uh, dimension reduction is um, um, so dimension is the number of variables, the number of columns, and there are many techniques in order to be able, if you have many variables, many dimensions, how do you know which ones to remove? That's what we'll talk a lot about. <coughs> um, in order to do a good job of that, in order to do a good job of that, you have to have domain knowledge. I talked a little bit about that last time. <coughs> if uh, the column is salary, right? Uh, domain knowledge is knowing everything about the salary. The salary is a minimum, a maximum. Uh, if you get a raise, the raise cannot be more than 10%, okay? So knowing everything about the column is part of domain knowledge, very important. Uh, <coughs> how do you get domain knowledge? What helps you? Uh, doing summaries of columns, we'll talk about that. Converting categorical to numerical variables, this is going from categorical uh, to binary, zero, 01. Binary zero, 01 are called dummy variables or indicator variables. Okay. <coughs> and <coughs> um, we will finish, we will talk about specifically about PCA next Tuesday. Today I'll talk about a number of other things that you can do to reduce the dimensionality uh, when you have a histogram. A histogram may represent 10 billion records. You have reduced the problem to a histogram. Anything that you can also reduce the rows by doing summary. You have a summary record that summarizes 10,000 records. If you have 10,000 10, sales in one month and you summarize into one record, you have reduced the dimensionality. Even though we say dimensions is the number of columns, but in general, we uh, whenever we, we, we reduce the problem, either by reducing the number of rows, the number of columns, have a graph representing data, that is <coughs> uh, calling, uh, uh, that is dimension reduction. Uh, <coughs> okay. Uh, so in data mining, you have many variables and you try to reduce uh, PCA. I also sent you a lot of uh, emails. I sent you an email. Um, they have this work here right now. Apple picking. I worked in, when I was a little kid, I worked in Apple picking. And if you click on that link, they have a robot that detects if the apple is uh, ripe and it goes and picks it up. Did you, did anybody click on that link? I sent you things that are very, very important. I know you have many things, okay? These are optional. <coughs> but they have a robot picking up apples. They have a robot picking up strawberries, mushrooms, lettuce, <coughs> AI. Uh, when you go shopping, the checkout uh, counter, that's AI. You go and you scan it. We help companies like Walmart eliminate jobs. So I was with my grandsons, and I said, go well, over there. I said, no, I don't want to go. <clears throat> um, because I want people to have their jobs. At the same time, I like the new technology. AI, in AI, instead of uh, uh, dimensionality of a model, it's called factor selection or future extraction. Yes, sir? How is a checkout line at a grocery store AI? Isn't that just a barcode? <clears throat> More it a is static. a barcode, but it doesn't just read. What it does, it updates the inventory. Oh, the update, okay, yeah. It looks at uh, uh, the person, it sends an email to somebody that says inventory is below this number. It tracks the last year's uh, pattern and it says, oops, we are off. If we are off, if, if, we, if the demand has been lower <laughs> the last year, even though it's less, it doesn't tell somebody to order. It does a lot more behind the scenes. Do you find it surprising that snow shovels are in the hardware stores or in CVS at the appropriate time? 
and <clears throat> sometimes they have less, sometimes they have more. Um, the scanners are becoming a lot more sophisticated. <clears throat> okay, sometimes that doesn't work. Having AI, it doesn't mean that it's going to work necessarily, right? Companies invest a tremendous amount of money to improve uh, things because the best that you can do is use past knowledge to predict for the future. And if you don't, that's why when you get to CBS and you get free stuff and you give them the card, legally they're supposed to pay you because what you give them is more valuable than money. You give them good data. Because if you go to uh, <coughs> uh, a few CBS in one place and suddenly also you allow uh, 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 Big Brother to know where you're going because all the data that is scanned, everything you say on your cell phone is uh, given to the Congress, to the Senate, and they analyze it. Everything. Even when you sneeze on your cell phone, it's recorded. Who's analyzing that? The U.S. government. They have people just analyzing everyone? Absolutely. Why? And there are some good, there are good reasons. Because if you keep saying, I'm going to kill somebody, if you keep repeating that... It wouldn't that be flag though versus someone sneezing or what you were just saying? But well, I mean, no matter what you say, mm -hmm. right, it, it, it's, it's recorded and they look at that. And then legally they, 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 it has been approved. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, because if you, if you have a certain pattern of doing certain things, they look at the pattern and sometimes mistakes are being made as they are. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so, when you look at the variables, uh, you have a bunch of questions. Uh, are the variables reasonable? Uh, uh, is, this a, is, the, is, is the variable useless? If you're doing a study <coughs> to see, for example, uh, uh, something about stocks and bonds, and there's a column there that says the number of dogs owned by the investor that has nothing to do with, with, with the stocks, right? So I'm exaggerating a little bit, but if the variable has nothing to do with what you're doing, then you want to exclude it. Uh, <clears throat> so can you monitor the variable before and after uh, the, the study? Uh, if you have a variable now, but that variable will not be available later on, you want to include that or not. Okay. You may not want to include it. <coughs> we will be using the post of housing data set. Anytime you're giving a data set, it's very important to understand the meaning of the columns and what they are. Okay. So crime, this is uh, crime per capita. So know the data and the context of the data. What do I mean by context? If I resume, we have anybody called Peter. John, John, Anna, Maria, Helen, no, Kyoka. If I say Kyoka, you raise your hand. I can go to next 321 and say Kyoka and with somebody else, right? I say Kyoka, context is the room here, and you answer. I say Kyoka in the next room, somebody else answers. So within this context, Kyoka is you. In another context, in another room, I said the same thing, it's somebody else. You know many times this is a problem with the news. Somebody says something long and they take a small part of what you say and they <coughs> make something else out of it because and the people that say it, they say that you took it out of context. So <coughs> it's very important to know the context that the data is, um, um, is used. Uh, <clears throat> you also, uh, there's a handout here, and color is very important, <clears throat> okay? So I want to, to start this process, and this is actually <clears throat> um, uh, very easy. Everything is here, and uh, this is uh, extracted uh, by following the Smiley book, all right? I give you notes, additional notes that the book uh, has, because I want you to give you some of the concepts. <laughs> the book talks about the concepts and it also applies them with junk. Okay? So, <clears throat> um, here, the document that you're looking at, and I have a Word and a PDF uh, file, the reason I have both is because I detected a pattern in the past 
where I had a PDF file only, and um, something happened, uh, and the Blackboard removed that file. And then I did not have the word version available, so that's why I put them both up. So it's the same thing. <coughs> okay, so, um, okay. So you have this, right, on page one. <coughs> so the, the, what table am I using here? Um, I'm sorry? Is it serial? Uh, no, it's, it's the, I have it right here. Um, this one here. Boston housing with MEDB. There's two flavors of the Boston housing data set. This is one of them. <clears throat> and what I want to do, I want to do these summaries that, um, okay. This, I want to, to do data summaries. I want to create this. And there's a multitude of ways to, uh, to do that. version of jump am I using? You click help about jump. I use 14.2. Okay. <coughs> um, so how do I generate this data? There are may, there's many different ways. Of page 1 of 36, I can click, uh, so this is my data, it has a lot of columns, and I click a column, and then I say, what is it, column viewer, right there. I, I can select my, uh, I can select a number of columns and they give you numerical or non-numerical, it doesn't matter. I don't know how far I went here. I went all the way to MEDB and then I click show summary. And I click show percentiles or show quartiles, I'm sorry. And I click show summary. And you see you have, these are uh, descriptive statistics summary records. <clears throat> um, so, um, I will talk about, because this tells you a lot, right? Now, this is <clears throat> um, some of the descriptive statistics. For the crime, the minimum is 0.062. The maximum, and you have it right in front of you, is 88. Uh, the mean, the average is 3.6. The standard deviation, you have this, right? But there's a lot more statistics like that. And if you click, <coughs> if I close this, uh, I can click um, Analyze, Distribution, okay? And I can select the same columns, click Y columns, right? And click OK. So you will see, for each column, it has a histogram, it has a, uh, a box plot. I can have this displayed this way, so I'm on page two now. Okay. <coughs> page three. And if I select, if I go to the red triangle, anytime, anytime you see a red triangle, okay. that's something. Analyze <coughs> distribution. Right? I select the columns for which I want to see statistics. I put them in white column. Then I click OK. And you see you have a histogram, a box plot for crime. Uh, you have quantiles, you have summary statistics. Right? Uh, let me click the red triangle where it says distribution. The other one. Uh, under crime, if I go to display options and say horizontal layout, so you see this appears horizontal. Okay. And 
I thought you could see them all horizontally. Uh, what is going on? It keeps picking out. horizontally, try display options, horizontal layout, right? You can make this bigger, wider, and okay, taller. Here you save the quantiles. This, is, this helps you put the box plot. Here you have summary statistics, and it shows you some of them. If I click this red triangle and go to customize, and say select all summary and click OK, then I see all the summary statistics that are available, which is really nice. Okay. <clears throat> so um, I am back here. So you have all this information. <clears throat> uh, how is that uh, helpful? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> when you look at this data, uh, just looking at the average and the median, and this is described right here, if the average is greater than the median, that means the data is skewed to the right. We talked about that. So just looking at that, you look at <clears throat> if, if they give you the count uh, blank at the end, right? So you have Five or six records, zero are blank. If you see it missing, you say, okay, why is it missing? Uh, this is pre-processing. No extreme values. <clears throat> uh, this doesn't show extreme values necessarily, but how do you uh, classify, uh, how do you see if you have extreme values? If the data is farther than three standard deviations from the mean, so then one, that's one way to classify extreme values, okay? <clears throat> so we talked about mean, median, and mode, and, and the standard deviation. I'll talk a little bit more about it. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, you can generate descriptive statistics uh, with Excel. I used to use Excel Miner. So now everywhere you see Excel Miner, replace it with Excel. Okay. Uh, you can do it in many different uh, ways. Okay, <clears throat> um, if the data is skewed to the left, that means, see, anytime the mean will be going, will be pulled towards the direction of the skewness. So here, <clears throat> um, here you see um, that when things are skewed to the left, the mean is uh, to the left. The median is always between. The median is always between uh, the the mean and the mode. The mode is the number that's used more frequently. The mode is always the number. You draw the line from the top down on the x-axis. That's where the mode is. Uh, these three are uh, the same when you have uh, when you have. Uh, no skewness, and when things are skewed to the right, the mean is greater than the median. That's what I used in the in the previous right. If the mean is greater than the median, then you have skewness to the right. What does it mean to have skewness to the right? In in, in simple words, what does that mean? Can somebody tell me? Yes. There could be like outliers on the upper end that are pulling the data. <clears throat> but what, what is exactly an outlier here? So that's what you said is absolutely correct. So if I have uh, if I have this here, 
what is the meaning of what is the meaning of this dot here? What is the meaning? What is that? Remember the the uh, this smooth curve is an approximation to a histogram, right? So if you have a histogram, if you have a histogram. This, I promise I'll get better by the end of the semester. Okay. This is skewed to the right. So this is skewed to the right. A point here means what is a histogram measure? If you have this number here, it means this number, the height is the frequency. You have a number that appears a few times. That's what outliers are. They appear to the right. Here you have outliers. Left. There's a number on the on the x-axis here that has a small frequency, a small height. That's what it is. <clears throat> so that's what an outlier is, right? It could be one or two outliers. So <clears throat> this is significant. It may or may not be significant. Um, so we are explaining uh, this uh, this diagram. <clears throat> here is both the uh, when you have skewness uh, to the left, um, there's a formula to calculate the skewness, by the way, and uh, we don't care about that. I I'll show you the formula, but don't worry about it. <coughs> when you have skewness to the left, S for skewness. It's unfortunate that they use S, but maybe it should, this should be called SK. This skew to the left corresponds to this box plot. And, um, you to know this. Um, you see in this box plot, in this box plot, um, this here, this distance from here to here is called what? This is called IQR, interquartile range. This point right here is called what? This point right here is the median. Now, <clears throat> um, when when the box to the left is bigger than the box to the right, it means that the mean is here. The mean is less than the median. So, knowing the mean is less than the median, you can do the box plot and you can do the uh, the skewed normal curve. So this corresponds to that. <coughs> um, and this is the minimum. This is Q1, Q2, Q3, and this is the maximum. Um, here you see the median is right in the middle. This is the same as that. When you have skew to the right, you have this box is bigger. So having you have the box plot, you can produce a general curve, right? You can produce this up here. Right? So <clears throat> this is important to know because in real life things are not symmetrical. Right? <clears throat> and same thing here. There's a formula for skewness. I'm not going to hold you responsible for that, but this is FYI. Um, you can calculate the skewness, <coughs> and uh, this is an adjusted, but we should realize that S that's calculated is produced one from here. So don't worry about the investment. <coughs> um, this is a review from statistics. Okay? <coughs> um, when the data if the data is normally distributed, then you can use the empirical rule. The important thing here is that you know, if you know that the data is normally distributed, then you can use the empirical curve, the empirical rule, which says that 68% of the data 
is within three standard, within one standard deviation from the mean. You all understand that, right? 95% of the data is within two standard deviations and 99.7 within three. You see, a lot of companies, if you have data which is outside of the, uh, this region, greater than three sigma, great, greater than mu plus three sigma, or less than mu minus three sigma, this is one definition of an outlier. There are many different definitions of an outlier. <coughs> and <coughs> many times, the best way to approach outliers is to say, these are the results using the outliers in the study, and these are the results without. Okay? And sometimes the difference is huge. I mean, if all these numbers are between uh, 10,000 and 100,000, and if this is on the x-axis, you have salaries, and, and this number is 1 billion, right? If you include it, the average will be, right? So do you want to include them? Many times, companies do not include the outliers. Okay. <coughs> um, if the data is not normally distributed, then we use the Chebyshev's theorem, all right? <coughs> and I'm just going to mention it. Um, <coughs> um, other ways to do uh, dimension reduction. Um, when I use Excel minor, I used to need to go to um, Excel to do pivot tables. But with jump, uh, I have not had the need to go to Excel at all so far. <coughs> so how do we do uh, this kind of table? See, in the, in the uh, uh, housing data right here, one of the columns is Chas. And if the, where is Chas? Right here. If that is a zero, that means the property is not adjacent to Charles River. If Charles equals to one, it means the property is adjacent to the Charles, right? And <clears throat> and so, um, <clears throat> um, I am doing this on page. So I'll, I'll go back to the <coughs> So I have this data here, and I want to create this pivot table. It's a very simple pivot table. And um, you can do this very nicely with Excel pivot. Okay. <coughs> um, and, and I have that done here. This is Excel pivot. All right. <clears throat> but I want to show you the jump. <clears throat> so, this is my data. I think my knee is touching something here. And that's why I'm so, happy to do. Uh, so, let me close some of these windows and jump. You see, if I close this, that's what takes me out. Maybe I'm doing this somehow. Right. And I wanted to do <coughs> the pivot uh, table. This people table right here. Okay. So let's go here. And <coughs> on page 10, um, it says to generate figure 4.6, which is that people table that I showed you. So what you do is <coughs> um, I it should be an analyze tabulate somewhere. I think it's on the previous page. Yeah. Yeah. So on page nine at the bottom, analyze mm -hmm. tabulate. So you click Analyze Tabulate. That's one of the many ways. Okay. This comes up. The important thing. Oh, what happened? I didn't touch anything. Man. That's what's nice about using a tool like that. I just miss something. Something. Something is going on. The nice thing, I have the table right here. 
analyze, tabulate, and um, Other professors told me that they had problems, and I had problems here myself. Last time I had to, uh, to call. Okay. <coughs> so, analyze, tabulate. Um, when you go. Let me. It's very simple. You click analyze tabulate. <coughs> okay. Please let me do just this one. Uh, analyze tabulate. Okay. Uh, uh, <coughs> okay. You have it open, right? Um, so drag MEDV. I'm not going to click on it. Oops. Here. Um, okay. Click MEDV, drag it and drop it where it says drop zone for columns. Okay? Then, so it's right here. Then, take chas and drag it and drop it here. All right. <clears throat> um, now, uh, the um, <laughs> let's see if you guys can, can do it first, <clears throat> and then, all right, they have the direction there. Drag this, uh, select mean and uh, n, and drop and drop them in the resulting cells. Click done. Are you able to generate that pivot table? Yes. I'm afraid you touched this. <coughs> okay. So that's a simple pivot table. <coughs> okay. Impossible. You can. Questions? Uh, yes. Whenever I put in the MEDV into the drops of the columns, it just starts computing the results. So I'm not able to put it into the. Uh, click uh, start over and start over again. You will see that you may need to do something over and over again to make sure. Okay. So and and it's <coughs> it has um, it has Uh, so let me just draw this. 
Um, so you have the drop zone for columns, okay? Drop for columns, drop for rows, and this is the resulting, right? When you put any BV here, it does something to this, right? <coughs> and then, um, you put MEDV, you will see it creates the picture that you see. And the picture, you have this, you have that. Uh, <coughs> so you will see MEDV here, and then um, um, you, uh, you put chas here. And then you will see uh, chas, okay, zero and one. And in the beginning, it has sum. So when you click n and me, you click on both of them, and you drag them, uh, you, you drag, and you put them on top of the word sum. And then you will see it will have mean and n. Okay, you just have to play with this a couple of times. That's all. I know. I apologize. That thing. <coughs> um, uh, this desktop is not uh, behaving uh, well. Um, so it is. We will need to, to do something to replace it. Okay. <coughs> um, okay. <coughs> so let me try. If I click. Oh. So MEDV, I put it here, all right? Oops. Cross my fingers. Um, then I, uh, what do I say? Um, chas, right? Uh, chas, you see, this is nominal. This is categorical nominal from the color. You, you click that and you put it over here. See the zero one? You say sum. Then I can select as many of these as I want. Right? And drag, uh, drag and drop them over the word sum. You see how I got a lot more than two? Okay. So <coughs> this is, <coughs> I didn't have to select all of this. So if you click start over, you can do MEDV, put it here, click chance, put it over there. Uh, this is all they wanted us to do. You select these two, you put them on the resulting cells, and you have... <coughs> I <coughs> if you want to undo the last thing, you have to be careful. I have to drop this right on top of the word sum and to replace it. If you click it a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left, it will add. <coughs> okay, so you see... <coughs> um, <coughs> Sorry, um, you see how we did the the pivot uh, the pivot table. Um, to do um, <coughs> the correlation, um, I don't have the main document. <coughs> I'm afraid to open it because it will kick me out. But um, on page of this colored document that I gave you, on pages 6 and 7, you have the correlation and the covariance matrix, right? So I will explain what is going on there. <coughs> um, and why um, we do what we do. When I created this pivot table, what am I doing? 
I am reducing the complexity of the problem into this. What does this tell me? The meaning of what? <coughs> this tells me that there are 471 properties which are not adjacent to the charms. Um, and there is there are 34, 35 properties that are near the charts, okay? <clears throat> the average uh, 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 price or value of a house for houses that are away from the charts, for those 471, the average, uh, uh, the median value, that's a bit of is 22.09 thousand. For houses that are adjacent to the Charles, the, the median value is higher. That's to be expected. So that's how you read this. Okay? <coughs> and now, um, if I double click here, you see how these records are highlighted? So these are the 471 records uh, that are away from the charts. If I double click here, this is, these are the houses that are near the charts. This is drilling. This is very important. Which records? Which houses? Which properties? Right? <coughs> uh, <coughs> uh, now, I want to, to go to, uh, I want to generate the correlation and the covariance matrix. See here, remind me when we get to 4 o'clock. 357. <coughs> um, I want to generate the correlation and the covariance matrix that you see on page six. On page six. Um, on page uh, seven, ignore what's on page seven. Okay. So, <coughs> how do I create the correlation and the covariance matrix? Very simple. You look at this data. Another reason, why do you think I gave you the hard code? No, no, not to just have it and look at it. Take it's notes. just a major reason. Why? Take notes. Take notes. But there's another reason. Because I do not trust computers. I learned. If, I, if something is very important, and this, I want this to be in color. <coughs> okay? <coughs> because Oh, what is happening? It's not an accident. This happened, and this computer needs to be replaced. Anyway, <coughs> so you click analyze. Oh, the pivot table does <coughs> dimensional reduction. That's what we're doing. <coughs> Another way <coughs> to do dimensional reduction is by looking at the correlation matrix. <coughs> so I do analyze multivariate, multivariate, multivariate method, multivariate. Okay, and you have this, <coughs> uh, and then I, um, if I wanted to, so what I want to find out, what I want to do, uh, this table has crime, zone, indus, chas, nox, rmh, I want to find out, are there any variables which are not necessary? And the way to reduce the dimension is by removing columns where we have multicollinearity. <coughs> um, uh, what is the output variable here? The output variable here is the is the is MEDV. Right? That's what you're trying to predict. The rest of the columns are the dimensions. And I have here what about 10, 11, 12 or something like that. Well, I want to find out if those independent variables, those input variables that are used to predict MEDV as I showed you last time with multiple integration, if there is if they're highly correlated. <coughs> so I select the variables that I want here. I click here, press shift, click MEDV. Yeah. I move them to Y columns and then I click OK. And <coughs> because I included continuous variables, it doesn't 
one continuous variable. Okay. So you have a lot, you have a bunch of stuff here, and we can add to this. <coughs> you have the correlation matrix here. <coughs> you have it on the <coughs> on your handout. Okay. <coughs> you saw how it was it was generated. Right here. In fact, I can just show this because I have the reactions. Okay. You see how some numbers <coughs> there's different colors here. This can also be called a heat map. <coughs> okay, so that's that's a perfect illustration of a heat map. Different colors with different numbers, right? Negatives are in red, then you have blue. <coughs> uh, as you're getting closer to one, um, so you see here. H with H is one. That's obvious. H is one, right? That's why you have the one here. This here is <coughs> so uh, at the intersection of crime and crime, this will be one. Zone and zone will be one. This is the, cor the, the correlation between the value with itself. <coughs> now, what you're looking at, you are looking, uh, and we need to define uh, when we, uh, <coughs> um, when two variables are highly correlated. There are different definitions, and there's a definition in the book which says that um, these numbers here, by the way, you use the letter R. If you have a sample and you use the letter rho, this is the Greek letter, the rho, if the data was a population. Okay? Population. And this is the this is called the correlation coefficient. There's a formula for it. Correlation coefficient. <coughs> uh, there are um, different ways to specify if the correlation between two variables is high, right? Uh, <clears throat> so there are many different ways. The book has one of them. If R, there's a formula here, uh, if the absolute value of R is less than, or, I'm sorry, is greater than is greater than or equal to 2 of the square root of n, okay? <coughs> then uh, the two variables uh, are highly correlated. That's one definition. So in this case, if I look at this number right here, right? So here, in this problem, what is n? Small n is the number of records. It's something like 5 or 6. It's the number of records. <coughs> How why can I find that? This very uh, inside jump it tells you. Right? So this is the number of records. I'm afraid to open jump because it's going to keep me up. The number of records. <coughs> so, <coughs> uh, this is point 0.902. Point nine one zero oh two. That is the R value here, All right? So um, the absolute value of that point nine one zero oh two um, is that greater than or equal to two over square root? How many records are there? Five or six. Five or six. I'm sure it is. Okay. So this means that these two columns, rad and tax, are highly correlated, regardless of what the meaning of the variables. What does that mean? <coughs> when you have two variables that are highly correlated, you want to remove one of the two. 
why? This runs counter to common sense. <coughs> um, you see, if you have columns, if you have columns like this, x1, x2, in this case, uh, they're tax and red, but in general, if you have columns x1, x2, x3, x4, and x1, x1, uh, the correlation between x1 and x2 is high, the correlation between x1 and x3 is high, x2 and x3 is high, right? Um, <coughs> why? There, there are two ways to approach. One is to use all of them. If I use all of them, what does that do to our results? <coughs> it is like this in a certain way. If there are three people, three witnesses, that say, <coughs> I saw Demetrius steal the easel, isn't that a lot more powerful than, I, uh, than one person saying it? So, if there are 10 people that say the same thing, that saw Demetrius steal the easel, then it's very powerful. So the results will be influenced immensely by using all three variables. But when you use the variables like that, and they're highly correlated, you really do not want, you only want one. Because the other two sway the results towards x1, x2, and x3. That is not what we want. And you will see how PCA does that. For now, the way we use the correlation matrix, if this number, r, is greater than this ratio, then you want to remove one and two. How do you know which one to remove? This is a business decision. If people talk about tax a lot more than RAD, RAD is uh, uh, how far, oh, RAD, RAD stands for radial highway, <coughs> okay? Um, is the property near a radial highway? Radial highway is a highway that has a circle, that has many uh, uh, exits. You know how you go to a rotary and you can take the first exit of the rotary, the second, the third, like that. So some, it's something like that. <coughs> um, so you remove one of the two. Um, so what are we doing? Dimension reduction. That's the correlation and the matrix. <coughs> um, um, and uh, so the, 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 uh, what we did here, you have all the variables that we want to see uh, how closely they are correlated to each other. Now you can also have a negative nine. You see this negative? So when, when R is positive, like here, when R is positive, like by accident, I click down there. Oops. <coughs> When R is positive, like here, okay, what does that tell us? If R is positive, if R is positive, if R is positive <coughs> that means, let's look at only the two variables, right, rather than tax. So this can be tax, and this can be grad. This again is from stats. If I is positive, that means that you have uh, these are the dots, like that, and the line goes upwards. <coughs> If R is negative, like this negative 0.7, right? This means that um, this means that the line.
line goes down. Right? Like that. So this is R negative. <coughs> R is between negative 1 and positive 1. The correlation coefficient. If R is exactly 1, what does that mean? The direction is up this way, and it also means that the dots are exactly on the line. If R is negative 1, then the direction of the line from left to right, the direction is always from left to right. The direction of the line is down this way, and the dots are again on the line. So which one is stronger linear relationship, this or this? The strength is exactly the same. It is the direction of the changes. Right? <coughs> so R, the correlation coefficient, helps us, it tells us about the direction of the linear relation between two variables. We take two variables at a time and the strength. The covariance, which we will talk about next time, tells us only about the direction, not the strength. Yes, sir? Uh, how do you know how many cases there are with the end? Um, or records? It will, um, it, 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 it's, it's uh, very easy. If you look at the descriptive statistics generated, Here, you open it. Okay. <coughs> you go here, it tells you all rows five or six. Right here. 